Namathuratana Tayasa May I pay homage to Triple Gem The Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha My respect goes to my parents and my teachers Hello and good evening everyone So today is Thursday the 3rd of uh, September and um, 2020 and this is Ajahn Sujan from Warapunya Meditation Centre, Aberdeen, Scotland. As usual I'm here online, uh, Facebook talk and thank you everyone for listening uh, this online Dhamma talk. Some of you have been following almost every day and uh, some of you just joined in and others are just uh, hop in and hop off. I remember Margaret in particular, I believe she never missed even a night listening the talks and the guided meditation, practicing alone, practicing along with all the monks. So today, uh, Margaret is finding a little hard time. So our thoughts are with you. And I hope you're getting better now. So today, again, we will be uh, focusing on our regular talk uh, in relation to the first discourse of the Buddha. That's a Dhamma Chakapavatana Sutta. Um, since the Vasa, the two months time, uh, we have been explaining and uh, uh, investigating into different topics and the different aspects of the Buddha's teaching on the basis of the first discourse of the Buddha. And yesterday I was giving you a background about how Buddhism revived in different places and how much the Buddhist uh, suffered and what the Buddhist the Buddha's teachings uh, summarized into and that I explained at the end of the talk was that the Buddha's teachings simply uh, three um, called the Sikha the trainings one is called the Sila Samadhi and Panya and the Sila Samadhi and the Panya <coughs> is again uh, could be uh, summarized through the Eightfold Noble Path. And this Eightfold Noble Path is uh, the path that uh, Buddha invented. Not invented, Buddha just formalized to find the truth and to fi find the ways to liberate ourselves from this samsara. The, uh, birth and death and continuous um, coming back and again and again in this samsara and this path in my view is the real buddhism and that's why in buddhism it is not the subject or a problem of what is a problem that you have it is not that what it is but Buddha and Buddhism is basically is how yeah how to deal with the situation how to deal with the problems how to deal with in our day-to-day -day dissatisfactions and in order to get this ways to deal with it we have to realize the truth that what is the problem what is going on and what and uh, what is the disappointment once we realize the truth of this dissatisfaction and a problem and basically there is a way out and that way is the buddha's teachings that's why buddha's teachings is not about the philosophy it's not about worshipping but it's, it's not about like in a paying to the Buddha and you will be rewarded it is about the teachings and investigating it's called a yoni somanasikara careful attention or 
carefully investigating with your full awareness on the problem that you have and finding the ways to deal with that. Once you've found the way, that is what the Buddha's teachings meant. So that's why all the Buddha's teachings is basically trying to give us the right path so we can lead a happy life and that leads to the liberation. Okay. So this is what the Buddha's teachings is and which summarize into Sila Samadhi and Panya, the morality, concentration and wisdom. And so far I have explained the wisdom, uh, two, two sections of the wisdom, two sections, uh, so Samaditi, the right understanding and Samma Sankhapa, the right uh, thought. And uh, a Sila section or a morality section which is Samma Vacha, the right speech and Samma Kammanta, the right action and Samma Vayama, sorry, Samma Ajiva, uh, the right livelihood. And now we are turning to this, the third section which is the concentration or the Samadhi or the mental cultivation section which has got the three factors. The so one is the Samma Vayama, the right effort, Samma Sati, the right mindfulness and Samma Samadhi, the right concentration. And we'll be focusing on that. Thank you, Margaret. I knew that you never missed it. I think I, you will be the only person that you never missed my talks and a guided meditation. And I'm very glad to hear that those these talks and my guided meditation helping you in your day-to-day -day life. Obviously, the Buddha said that um, each drop of water, if we collect continuously over the period of a time, it doesn't matter how big a pot is, it will fill up. So little by little, we will get real happiness and a real uh, way of finding the real, uh, real way to deal with the situations. Thank you. Uh, so uh, with that, uh, we will be focusing on these uh, three factors for over a, a couple of days or a week. So, a Buddha was also similar to other uh, religious leaders who tried to find ways to deal with the human problem and human conditions. What difference is in that in other faiths or the other uh, religious leaders, they always try to link with the external world and trying to find the comfort uh, by relying on their pardon or relying on their uh, excuses on our sins or on our unwholesome thoughts or unwholesome actions. Therefore, whereas a Buddha is different in a sense that he didn't give any hope that if you are paying respect to him or if you are worshipping him, he would liberate you. He never encouraged us to rely on external, uh, external entities or external power or anything that uh, will liberate us. He encouraged us to find our own ways. That's why modern, uh, modern uh, speakers in uh, modern speakers normally, you know, and religious speakers normally take Buddhism as a form of a DIY, that we have to do it ourselves for the liberation. And over the history, what we can see that a religion or the faith developed due to the uh, misunderstanding and fear over uh, this natural disaster or natural occurrence and something changes drastically cause a, a very difficult time and uh, created this fear 
uh, of uh, the people's mind and as a result of uh, that they have developed that other sides of the world or other parts of the world or other pa or other side of any incidents there is someone who is controlling the, over this uh, cosmos or over this uh, any things that's happening and with that develop the concept of a worshipping or develop the concept of paying respect uh, invisible uh, kind of a power or energy over any drastic changes that takes place in the nature and gradually that developed into concept of the deities and a gradually develop into uh, so-called there is another entity who is who is governing the whole system of this uh, the cosmos and similarly uh, gra uh, gradually it developed into a faith and a religion and people began to take a refuge and a worship for the spiritual security and uh, finding a comfort from that uh, activities and always there was a medium as uh, someone who will mediate uh, between a uh, humans and then uh, to something which is beyond the um, you know, empirical uh, experience or beyond that uh, someone can see through the naked eyes and that's how the priests began uh, in uh, priest become a mediation between so-called external entity or power who is governing over the whole entire universe or even the human body human human nature and gradually this uh, the priesthood gradually developed uh, the certain rules and regulations over uh, between the god or so-called the uh, invisible power um, and then the human human society or human community and gradually that becomes the ethics and gradually that becomes the tradition and how the caste system developed the, the segregation and difference within the human uh, community developed and within the priesthood again there are you now forms of a different varieties of ways to practice in order to feel the connection with this external power who is governing the entire cosmos and that's how the concentration developed the mind power developed uh, and gradually someone who has got the very deep understanding about uh, the their own mind their own uh, human nature and uh, how the mind works and gradually uh, able to take control over the mind and able to channel between the human and so-called external uh, beings and gradually what happened was that this has become a form of like you can liberate by yourself or you can you know develop your uh, your own salvation through your own mental development mental practice mental cultivation um, and particularly in the in the indian brahmanical religion what happened was the first uh, we have to rely on the priest to connect or to re, re, reunion with the Ottoman or Brahman. But later on, within this priesthood, they have developed the, such a form of a concentration, meditation, and going into the, such a deep level of uh, jhanas and a deep level of mental purification. And they have this uh, developed this concept uh, that they can liberate and, and able to be you re reunite with the Ottoman without waiting for the so-called Brahman to or Ottoman or so-called the Lord uh, to pardon or to welcome you and that concept developed such a long time 
Yeah? And then, but still you are relying on the external entity or believed the, the form which was governing the entire cosmos. In later phase, what happened was that when we look at the, the, this revolution of this human thought uh, and how finding the salvation that these again a group of a people a group of the ascetics those who are trying to uh, understand this whole conditions and a whole concept of you know free yourself and liberate yourself and reunite with uh, the higher being that there is a possibility that there is more than that beyond this just a reunion with uh, this so-called uh, the one Ataman but everyone was trying to find out what is the way what is you know, what is the way you know, who can find the way and everyone was striving for it when you look at the Buddha's uh, life uh, and in particularly in a Buddhist scripture when we look at the Vinaya Pitaka it explains detail uh, a lot of uh, uh, the ways of uh, you know, people trying to reconnect with the external body and uh, they have uh, this understanding that there is a possibility of liberating himself or oneself without uh, relying on this external entity or the power but they couldn't find it and everyone was just trying to meditate, you know, going into the forests, uh, staying this ascetic life and practicing the austerities, just to find the ways to deal with that. And this has changed and that's how when the Buddha uh, found out after followed all those techniques, all those methods and the Buddha went on practicing and then he realized that yes there is a way and when you found that way uh, then you will be able to liberate yourself without relying on someone external power uh, and then that's how one becomes the Buddha and that's how Buddha also became became the Buddha through his own personal experience and uh, experimenting and uh, a great deal of practice and he became the Buddha now in this modern life uh, when we look at the modern days we are so busy in the past people tried to develop different forms of uh, technologies just to comfort in their day-to-day -day life and gradually the technology from a basic it develops so much advanced now that these technologies are bringing us uh, for comfort but now it is not just the comfort that uh, technology has brought to us in fact technology has over and uh, what's called uh, take control over our life we became a slave to this technology and is all the scientific research scientific advancement supposed to give us freedom supposed to give us more happiness and yet these have caused a more troubled look at ourselves you know, in this pandemic time right? and people are living at home they do not talk too much, but they are using the mobile phones, texting, finding out who they are, where they are. And I found it that you know, people are using this technology to connect with the wider world, but they have forgot to connect within in the small area. And that's how they have lost their happiness. In the past, I used to give a tasks for our members that uh, go and sit in the middle of the uh, market and observe people's wondering. I did myself a couple of times and actually normally during the summertime I normally go to the market and sit in one side and watch 
people's activity that how restless they have become and how rushing they are it's like a rat race they don't have time to themselves even eating lunches they're grumbling and walking and even they don't have a time for a makeups you know they just walk and you know, driving and you know, making up themselves refreshing like that so life becomes so restless and so fast and all they are working so hard every one of us are working so hard every one of us are you know rushing so much only to find the happiness and that's simply because we are thinking uh, that external uh, material gain brings us a happiness and which is no different in the past in the history ancient time that our human our ancestors rely on external power thinking that they will bring a peace they will bring a happiness which is you never know you didn't see them whereas now scientific findings these technologies and scientific you know advancement we see the material advancement but again we still cannot find the happiness day by day basically we are you know running after this material accumulation uh, simply hoping that one day i will be happy but the more you couldn't very unable to be happy more than that we become a more miserable we forgot our own lifestyle we forgot even our own self happiness i have heard so many people talking as well that they never see even the sunlight during the winter time because they wake up you know, in a middle uh, in the middle of the darkness and then they have to be in the office all day and then when they left the office what happens again darkness go back home sleep tomorrow again so like that for half a year they have no time they have no time for themselves they have no time for family they have no time for any other people and happiness they are looking for where is that and that's simply because we are trying to get the external material things to give us a happiness now we have i'm not saying that you don't have to have those you have to have them too but we have to know the limitation we have to know that how can we use that properly how can we find ways to make what's called a conciliation ourselves in those situation and this is all what need is effort yeah it's up to us to find the ways to deal with that and which way we want to take it turn right or left it's all entirely how we make our own choice to find real happiness real contentment and this is the part of this uh, a third uh, spectrum of this buddha's teachings the concentration or this the set of the three teachings that we have to come across and watch it cl- closely and investigate very mindfully once we have fully investigated then we find that we are happy or not happy all based on our reactions all based on our uh, engagement and again that's again based on how we put in or how we uh, protect and how we abandon things that is not necessary and how we you know uh, developed or cultivate things that is necessary for our happiness and anything that is giving us a happiness have we got 
enough energy or enthusiasm to maintain or protect those activities or not. The very moment when we know that certain things that is not giving us a happiness, we will be we are able to diminish those activities uh, and you know le lessening it until we are able to eliminate it or abandon it that uh, those activities. And again, ability to develop more and more on a certain activities so that is giving us happiness and anything any activities like that gives you a you know, happiness like let's say you know walking for a half an hour a day or you know meditating half an hour a day or chanting you know 10 15 minutes a day or just having a you know early morning and you know, a fresh air sitting and having a cup of tea if that makes you happy, then just make it. Maintaining that routine or someone wants to go for a, uh, like a running or going to the gym. Maintaining that. Again, this is all based on our own effort to make it change, to make it happen. And that's all comes under this mental cultivation. Um, uh, we have to change our mindset we have to change our habit patterns we have to change by ourselves not relying on any external entity or the power they have no control over us at all it's we who change ourselves and if we, it is ourselves it's our responsibility to make ourselves happy or unhappy and that's based on how much do we understand our own minds and our heart. And so mental cultivation, the third factors of this Eightfold Noble Path, is down to us to develop our own capability or the power to change towards our own happiness. Okay? So I end here for tonight's uh, talk. Uh, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow continuing on the same topics thank you everyone for listening and uh, may you all be well and happy may the Buddha Dhamma Sangha bless you uh, in few moments time we will have a chanting and a guided meditation you are most welcome to join with us until then see you take care and good night if you are not joining with us Satu.